Good day students, so today we're going to look at the advert program and we are going to convert it so that it does not get input from the user but rather reads a text file. So I've opened the program up that's available on Ifundi, you can download it, there's a link um, below the task. Uh, it's called adverbsnofiles.zip and then after you've unzipped it uh, it will open up with two classes one is the test adverts and the other one is the advert now with advert we don't really need to change anything because the object class will remain the same the only difference is now instead of asking for user input with a scanner object we are going to replace this with a text file okay so let's close this out the program says convert the program to read data from a text file rather from the keyboard an example of the text file content is given you can create your own text file then it says create a class called file class to keep all the methods on file handling in one class so let's do that let's create a file class we'll call it file class there it is and open it up and just remove the sample code then it asks we need to write a method called read from file which receives a parameter the file name and then there are some example code to help you write the method but we are going to do it together now first of all we'll need a few things here so if we look at the test class we are making use of a, an array of objects here so when we read from the text file we want to populate an array and then as with the fill array it returns the array back to the actual array so when we use the fill array for user input we would populate um, we would get the input and then we would create a new object call the constructor and store it in the array at a specific index so we'll need to do that now for file reading so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two private instance fields one for the advert which will be an array of objects array adverts equals new advert and we'll keep it at 20 spaces and then of course we'll need a counter variable for this which will be a private int count adverts equals zero okay <clears throat> now we can write the read file method so just a plain simple public void because now when we populate the array we can call this method the method will execute and we can use a get method to return the array and a get method to return the count values so public void read from file and it receives the file name as an argument okay so let us we'll need a few files so when we are reading text files there are a few classes you need to import first of all you'll need the java.util.scanner you'll need import java.io.file reader and we'll need an exception class java.io.io exception input output exception and I'm going to import a visual component as well javax.swing.j option pay and uh, you'll see why we're going to use this later okay now in the oh, io exception exception okay there we go now first of all I need to define a scanner object sc equals new scanner now usually you would say system.in is the argument but in this case we are going to create a new file instance of a file reader but the file reader needs an argument which is the file name and the file name we received as a parameter for this method now when we are 
uh, working with text files. Let me quickly grab the Fundi page here. Uh, we have Burger King as, a, as a, a piece of information, then a comma, H, comma, 35, comma, yes. So each piece of information is separated by a comma. Now, when I read the first line, I need to split up these different pieces of information. Once I'm done with that, I need to repeat the same steps until I've read the whole text file. So if I need to repeat statements, that reminds us of of a, a while loop. So we can use a while loop to step through the text file. So while, we use our scanner object, and then there's a nice method we can use now. Uh, sc dot has next. So while the scanner file, the scanner object I mean, still has a line to read. So if the, the, the object has a next line, this loop will continue. In other words, when it reaches the end, so let's say we only have three lines after it has read Kentucky it will stop because there's no new line to read so that is what this boolean expression will do it will continue until there are no lines left to read like I explained earlier I'm gonna let me quickly copy one of these lines I'm going to let's add it here no that's not what I want to do I'm just going to copy that is one of the lines in the textbook uh, in the text file so when we read a line we read the whole line right and that we can do with the following statement we add a new variable to store that line so string line equals sc dot next line in other words what this will do and will store line string line will contain the whole line of that uh, first uh, line in the text file but what we need to do is we need to split up this information because we want the name let's go to advert we want the, the company name the size the number of words and the color so the, the I don't know what the color is here but we'll get to that now then we need to split it so there's a nice string function we can use in Java but I'm going to create a new string array so string let's just call it info or I'll usually like to say data as well equals then I take the line that was just read from the text file line and I use the split function and in parentheses we need to indicate uh, which symbol or character the split function should use to split up that string and in this case my information is separated by a comma so in double quotes I can add a comma and what this line dot split will do it will take the f it will read the, that that string until it reaches the comma and then before the comma it will store that first value Burger King in data index 0 then it will ignore the comma and it will take this the next one until the next comma will stop it will take the H and store it in position data 1 data 2 and then also data 3 so it's a very nice function to use with this array now that we have the data split up into an array we can start assigning that index to a specific in um, variable I mean so the first one is the string company equals info or no I use data and this example data zero like I said data zero contains the, the name Burger King then we have a char that's the size and that equals data at position one but now something to remember this is a string and I can't explicitly convert a string to a char so what we need to do is dot char at zero then we have an integer for the number of words equals info at position two but now we have another problem here I can't explicitly undeclared variable info Ugh, I'm doing that again data um, this will throw an error not maybe not if I compile it oh there we go incompatible types can a string cannot be converted to end so in order to convert this 
um, it's you remember this from C sharp it's similar to the the C, C sharp way of converting strings to integers we are going to say integer dot parse int and put that in parentheses so it will take the string value here which will be 35 it will parse it as an integer and store it in the variable lastly we have the string um, color equals info at no I'm lying data at position 3 okay because the yes will mean it should it be printed in color or should it not be printed in color so yes it should be printed in color now that I have all the information I need for my object class to call the constructor we have the company name we have the size the number of words and yes or no if it should be a um, printed in color we can store this by, uh, uh, we can create a new object and store it in our array so array adverts at position count advert and you'll see this is why we had to initialize that value it's important to initialize this value to zero so that the first index will start at zero so that will be equal to a new instance of the advert class so I'm calling the constructor and I'm passing through company size num of words and the color variable okay then the last step we should not forget num word words there we go is this these steps will be repeated so for the next line that it will read for which is pizza hut um, it needs to store pizza hut now at index one and not index zero so what we shouldn't forget is count adverts plus plus okay now outside of the while loop something that's also important to do because we're working with an external file and reading from it we need to close that file otherwise we may get some errors so to do that we just say sc that's the name of my object here sc dot close and please don't forget this um, you, you, you are usually awarded a mark for this and it's an, an easy mark but just don't write this inside of the while loop otherwise if you were to do this inside after the first uh, state the statement has been executed the first time it will close the file and then it will throw an error because it will say there is no file open and then you'll have problems and you might not know why so make sure you close your file after you have repeated the steps outside of the while loop in other words now something that I did not do, which I always should do, is when we're working with files, we should use a try catch. Now a try catch, it just means that in the try block, if any exception or any error occurs, it will fall back on the catch statement and it will provide you with um, some useful information. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this and I'm just gonna cut it is temporarily let's add the try block and the try block will always need to be followed by a catch because you'll see try without catch catch in parentheses exception except you can actually say io exception e e is just the name of that exception we created and this is where the I O except I always miss the P exception. Let's just use the normal exception today. Okay. Okay. I added I imported a visual component here, almost like a message box in Jar in C Shop. So what we can do is J option pane dot show message dialog first argument will just be null and error using the file something like that so in in case that anything happens within the try block so let's say 
the file name is incorrect and it throws an error when it tries to read the file then it will throw an exception but it won't crash your program it will just give you a pop-up saying there's an error with the file now what we can do is uh, we can say plus no not there plus e dot message am i remembering this correctly i think it's that message is it get message there we go get message and then it will give you uh, more uh, relevant information on what exactly the exception was okay now that we've done the read file method let's quickly write a get method for the advert array and for the counter and we all know how to do a get method so let's do public int get count and it will just return count adverts field and let's write one for the array as well public advert return an array get advert array and we'll return array adverts is it adverts advert yes there we go okay now we need to move on because we need to write the output to a text file as well so let's go down do this and let's write the write file method so public void write file And we actually also need a parameter string file name. There we go. Okay, let's not forget our try. Oops, try and catch blocks. Yep. Catch exception E. can write the j option pane dot show, no, dot show message dialog null and let's just say get error using this is actually error creating the file and e dot get message just to get some more details on that exception okay now we need to create another object so when reading from a file we used scanner and instead of using system.in we opened a new file reader object with the file name now we'll need to import some other classes let us do that we'll need import java.io.printwriter I think we'll need the file writer as well. Import java.io.filewriter. Okay. Let's go down. Now let's create the print writer object. Let's print writer file write, for example, is the name I'm giving it equals new print writer. And then the argument for print writer will be a new file writer and in parentheses uh, we'll add the file name okay when you define a file name manually it is important that you always say file name dot txt for example let's say that was shops shops dot txt you need to add the txt as well and because it's a string you'll also need to define it with double quotes so if you're not using a variable here, make sure that you always add it in quotes and add the file extension. Okay. Now we want to write information or results from an array. Remember our array is global here, so we can just use it for, because it's a data field. 
Um, but when we need to step through an array or an array of objects, it's always important to uh, have a counter variable to step through the different index of the array. Now, for output purposes, for loops are always preferred. In k equals zero, k should be less than count advert because even though the array has 20 spaces to store an uh, object, we might only have three lines in the text file. So if you use the length function, you will get null pointer exceptions because it will try to run through all 20 um, elements in the array. So do not use the length function, rather use a counter to make sure you only run the loop for the amount of items that are present in the array. Okay, now when we want to output value, um, text to the console, normally in, in, in BlueJ, we would use system.out.print. But now we are writing to a file. So what we'll need to write is the file write, the name of the print writer object, dot print line or print print line will just print on a new line each time so it's quite uh, easy to remember and then we want to output uh, let's see what what did they output here they output a list a list I'm not, not going to do the list now let's just let's just output the array adverts at position k dot get company plus let me add a tab and the r sign just for the next value and then the cost because after we've read the text file we are calculating some costs and there's a method for that uh, what is it called again calc something calc cost okay calc cost so array adverts at position k dot calc cost okay and that's the only line we're outputting and write into the file then something that's also important when writing to a file is after the loop file write dot close and we already wrote our exception okay let me just align everything great okay so now what we did here with the file class is first of all we imported a few classes we need we created two data fields private data fields one for the array of objects and one for the counter we wrote two methods the first one was read from file it receives the file name we created a scanner object and the argument was a file reader so a new instance of file reader with the file name in parentheses we use the sc.hasNext, the hasNext method, because it will uh, repeat the loop until there is no new line to read. We read the, the entire line, used the split function with the, the delimiter. The delimiter in this case is a comma, it can be a hash, it can be a, an asterisk, doesn't really matter. It will split that line up into various data items. The first data item will be Burger King, the second one is H, the third one is 35, and the last one is yes. When working with char and a string, we need to add dot char at, and when wanting to convert a value to an integer, we'll have to say integer dot pass int with the string in parentheses. We created a new instance of the class by calling the constructor. We stored that object within our array of objects at position counter, and we had to increase our counter before the loop ends. After all these statements have been repeated until the end of the text file has been reached, we need to close that object. And this is all done within the try block. If any exception occurs, the catch will execute and it will throw a message dialog box saying there's an error. And this we also had to import. It's a visual component in the Java x.swing library. We wrote two get methods, one for the count and one for the array. And then we wrote the write file where we um, provide output to a text file. So we are going to create a new text file in essence here. 
the file name will define it when we call this method. Uh, we used a loop to display the whole array, the company name and then the cost for the printing and again we closed our print writer object at the end after the loop. This is also done within the try block. If any exception occurs, the catch will execute and it will throw a message dialog box with an error message. Now we need to actually incorporate this class into our test class because currently in our test class we have been uh, making use of a full array method. So let us change this to incorporate that file class. Now because we're working with another class it is important that we create an instance of that class. So file class does not have a constructor. But if you can remember from a few weeks ago when we started with, with um, object, when there isn't a, 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 a constructor, if you didn't write your own constructor, there is a default constructor that Java will um, create for you. So test class, let's write file class. I'm just going to call it f equals, or let's say fc for file class equals new file class. And we're calling a default constructor so there are no arguments. Now, yeah, this array advert equals full array. I'm going to comment this and I'm going to comment this one as well because this, we're not going to use this exactly as is. Now that we have the file class, this will error now, but it's fine, we'll fix it soon. So I want to first read the file in order to get the data, do the calculations, and then I want to write to the file. So to call the read uh, from file method, we'll use fc, that's the name of our object, dot read from file. Now I need to give it a name. So the name will be advert.txt we'll create a text file now then once I have populated I've read from the text file and I have elements stored in my array of objects I want that array so let's go back so array advert equals fc dot get advert array let me see there's no okay and we also want the counter, so int count equals fc dot get count. And then that other error you have down below will stop. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we created an instance of the file class, we called the read from file method, we got the array and we stored it in our array here. We got the count and it stored it in a, in a, in a variable. And now the last step is to output, ah, to write to file. So fc dot write to file, and we'll give it a name. Let's say advert cost dot txt. Okay, so it needs to be a string, and we need to add the file extension as well. Display. I'm just going to comment out this. Uh, right to file. What did I call it? Something else. Right file. Just write file. Okay, let's fix that. Write file. Uh, display. I'm just going to comment out inquiry right now because I don't want to test it. I know it's working. Fill array. We're not using it anymore. The display array. We are using the inquiry. I just comment out now. I know this is working. I just don't want to struggle with that being in the way. Let us compile, everything is fine. Now, I don't think I have a text file. Oh, I have. I did include the advert text file for you. So in the zip file, there is an advert text file. If you open it, we have three lines. Burger King, Pizza Hut in Kentucky. So make sure that the text file that you want to read is within your project folder. You'll see there it is. Okay. Minimize that. Let's close all of these. And there we go. You can see we have some connections going on here. Now let's execute our main method. It's reading, it's reading, and I got an error. Adverts.txt, the system cannot find the file specified. Okay, so we that catch is working. Let me just quickly see 
advert, what is the name? Advert. So you see, that's the reason why I didn't pick up the file. I defined the name as advert.txt, but it's actually just advert. So let me remove the S. Compile. Let's run it again. And there we go, a list of adverts to publish, all the code, Burger King, and the total cost. Let's see if our output file was created. Yes, there is the ad output file, advert cost. Let's open it, and there it defined the name and the cost of each advert. Okay, I hope that this made sense and that you will be able to do the next task on your own, uh, please use this example and the examples that were given on Ifundi as a guideline towards writing your own solution for task two. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you soon in the next video.